Welcome back to another episode of Orienty Fitness Radio. And today I'm joined by health tech entrepreneur, dermatologist, and a member of the RT family, Dr. Davul Banasali. In this episode, we start off by talking about Davul's own RT journey so far, his initial why, and why medical professionals in particular need to pay attention to their own health if they want to serve their patients to the best of their abilities. We then switch gears and discuss his area of expertise, dermatology and hair, as Double shares some easy to implement advice to optimize your skin and hair health immediately. Double's one of the most sought after experts in his field and his clinic in the heart of New York City is home to many A-listers and celebrities. If you spend a lot of time focusing on improving your aesthetics from the neck down, this one's all about the neck up. So without further ado, let's dive in. Cool. So what are you working on right now? Uh, so a little bit all over the place. Uh, my office is picking up nicely. So we have a new office in Hudson Yards here in New York. Uh, it's growing pretty quickly. And then I have a few different of my tech companies. I do some, some pharma tech. I do some um, kind of digital health. We have an EMR we built and a few other projects. And then we, we had that Amazon skincare line we launched with Amazon. And I have one more skincare line coming down the pipeline pretty soon. That'll be hopefully pretty big. Awesome. So people, if so, people know uh, what sort of companies you're dealing with. Do you want to just go into uh, what fields uh, the, all, the, all of them are in? Sure. So uh, there's a few. So a couple of them are in pharma tech. So we try to increase um, uh, patient access to medications at affordable prices. That's a that's a personal thing that I've been into. Uh, we have a hair medication company uh, where we do prescription hair growth medications uh, that dermatologists can create. Uh, we have an EMR. Uh, EMR is like electronic medical record. So every every single office, um, in, at least in our field and, and pretty much every field, uses this, this platform to manage patients, to do um, your organizing, your inventory, insurance claims. So we built one out and uh, we gave it away for free to a lot of offices because uh, I don't believe in charging my colleagues. So uh, <laughs> we did that one, which grew, which has been growing pretty quickly. And then on the skincare side, we started a company called Fast Beauty with Amazon. That was that was Amazon's first skincare line ever um, that was exclusive to them. And so that was a project last year. And then the next one, uh, I still under some, some non-disclosures. So um, that one's coming pretty soon, but it should be international launch. That should be pretty big, um, probably by like sometime, you know, late in the spring, early summer. Awesome. So you've got a lot of things going on. Uh, and to say, and it's probably an understatement, knowing uh, how you are when you, when you contact me. And, and when we generally speak, it's always like, oh, I'm here, I'm there. I'm working yeah. Project, um, and one thing that was really cool is is when you recently posted on your social media about how uh, focusing on yourself became uh, ultimately fell on the back burner for so long when you were building all these companies. Yeah, and this year in 2019, you spent a lot of time uh, regaining that control and taking charge of your your physical health again. Can you talk about why? Uh, firstly, it fell on the back burner, and what triggered you to make that change again? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I think honestly in medicine we're programmed to put everybody first, which is fine. I mean, you know, it, it's not a bad mentality to have, right? So our patients come first, our family comes first and everything else. And, you know, again, I won't say it's a bad thing, but it's not sustainable. And what the issue becomes that if you're always doing this, 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 you don't take care of yourself and things start slacking. Right. And, you know, when we're, we have to, I have to always be operating at a hundred percent, like every millimeter counts when I'm doing my procedures, right? If I'm doing cosmetic things and I'm playing in a small little like micro millimeter area, I have to be on. Um, if I'm doing tech company stuff, you know, one sm small mistake can affect thousands of people. And so, you know, you only can perform at a certain level for so long without really concentrating on yourself. And, you know, for me, I realized like I was getting burnt out. Like I was not sleeping as much. I mean, physical fitness was like my last priority. I didn't really care. I mean, it was one of those things where I was in okay shape, but I wasn't anywhere near. I mean, you know, it's like if you buy a car, you you have to take it in once a year to the shop and at least get it like tuned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, with our body, at least like, you know, a few times a week, you have to be like making sure it's functioning you have to kind of push the limits of it, all that stuff. And so for me, that was a really big kind of important um, kind of realization. I think the second I realized that everything became a lot more, um, a lot more kind of palatable and, and, and things actually started becoming a lot better. I mean, everything was like functioning quicker. Mine was working more smoothly. I was happier uh, and I was able to balance things a bit better. 
What was your trigger? Um, I don't know. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, I think it was just the fact that I was exhausted all the time. And then one day I was just kind of, you know what, like, let's kind of like reprioritize some things and, and why am I, and I would realize that, you know, sometimes just sleeping was all I needed for a few days to get my brain right. And I'm like, look, if, if, if this little tweak can do so much for me, what if I started doing some other tweaks here and there and started really focusing on, um, kind of creating a structure for myself. And now I'm up at 5 a.m. every day. I'm usually in the gym between like 5.30 and 6.30. Um, I do my tech companies and my skincare companies probably between like 6.45, 6.50 and like 8.30. And then I'm in my office seeing patients and, and I still work full time seeing patients. But, you know, I manage some pretty big companies without having to sacrifice my office, my patients, any of that stuff. And I think when you create a structure, it makes a difference, right? So it's, uh, it's you know, it's one of those things where you kind of just, it just, sometimes light bulb hits and you're like, look, I got to do something. This is not going to, this is not going to work out otherwise. Yeah. What was, um, what is the one part of your structure that is, is so critical for you uh, in order to keep your habits throughout the week? I think it's just the idea. I mean, you read all those books about people who are successful. Everybody gets up early. Right. And I think for me before that was never really a realization. Um, I just so poorly focused on sleep. I never cared. I was like, yeah, I'll go to bed at one, two, 12, 11. I get up when I get up, but you're missing valuable time, right? So like that's your efficient time. I think 90% of your efficiency happens before, you know, before 9 a.m. when you get to work. Like you're you're there, you're 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 clocked in. You're no distractions, no social media, nothing. And you can just do that. So for me, and then when you work out and you add that, it becomes like a superpower because you're now your blood is pumping, your mind is fresh. Um, you kind of have this like um, I kind of joke, but that's when you feed the, you feed the engine of the train, the train starts moving fast and then you can kind of crush through everything you need to crush through. You make efficient decisions, right? You don't make the, Hmm, what do I do? Or think about it back. You just make quick decisions. Cause you're just like, all right, let's move. Yeah. Are you a fan of, uh, limiting decisions, uh, through the day, like the menial stuff? Yeah. I, uh, I think in general, the bigger and busier you get, the less you have time to, to go back and forth. You have to trust your gut a little bit more. So um, I either go yes or no on 90% of my decision. If it takes a little bit longer, I usually punt it to like, you know, a weekend or something like that. I might weigh pros and cons and decide then, but 95% of my stuff is just gut decision real fast and move forward. Interesting. So what advice do you give to, to fellow busy entrepreneurs, medical professionals, anyone in similar fields to you who may have put their, their health on the back burner? Because we hear about it all the time, especially, especially in the medical industry. It's funny how, the the very profession they do is about looking after people, but they end up end up being in bad shape themselves and suffer from a lot of the symptoms that you mentioned there, such as burnout, etc. Yeah, I mean, I think like you get it's it's weird. It's like a mental it's a mental thing for sure, right? You think that if I don't sleep as much and I work hard and hard and hard, I'll be I'll do better, right? Mm -hmm. The best thing I can tell people is like it's the opposite of how it works. You might have to take one step forward to take two steps back, right? You might have to sleep a little bit more for a few days and you'll, you'll figure out magically all the decisions you're having trouble making, start making themselves and you get more clarity around them. And again, like I think it's one of those things where you have to grind and hustle and do whatever you need to do to get to where you need to be. Um, but if you're not functioning at 100%, you, just, you won't get there as quick as you need to, as well as you'll need to. It won't, it won't turn out how you want it to turn out. Yeah. That, that's a realization I think people need. They only, they only get that once they hit that, that point of burnout and the con continuously. Yeah, 100%. Even you and I have talked about it. Yeah, I always say you work too hard, but uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I think, and I'm sure you're realizing it as well, that the more you, you take time to do it the right way, um, the better it ends up being as opposed to like, let me do this, let me add more, let me do this, you know, you know, burn the midnight oil, like you burn out and that doesn't help anybody. So it's one of those things where, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, whatever, whether you're, you know, in banking or medicine or whatever it is, like, if you're not, if, if you have a car that's not functioning fully, you can't hit the, uh, the accelerator. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Sleep has been the biggest one for me recently. Just putting a bit more, a couple more hours into my day for sleep and yeah. you feel so much better. Yeah. It's like a drug. I mean, I, I joke, sometimes I sleep like eight hours in one in a night and I wake up and I'm like, Oh my God, like Jesus Christ, this feels like the best cup of coffee ever. So uh, I just got to do it every once in a while, you know? Yeah, for sure. Let's, uh, let's go into more your area of speciality now, uh, yeah. which I believe is dermatology. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a lot of people listening who, you know, they, they, look, they take care of their bodies, uh, but they also want to make sure that not only are they in shape, but they're looking good, looking good for it. Um, and a big part of that is obviously their skin. So 
starting very, very broadly, what are the keys for men and women alike? And if there are any differences, please mention it. Uh, if you're looking to optimize their skincare health. I mean, this whole process is interesting. When you're working out and doing a transformation, it does wreak havoc on your body, right? Because you're transforming it. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, I'll give you your, your general, always as a dermatologist, got to recommend your sunscreen, right? Cause as much as I, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll scream on rooftops for sun protection for skin cancer. Um, but even for aging, I mean, photo aging is a real thing, right? So people, I like to run outside and stuff like that, but there's literally nothing on earth that makes you age quicker than being out with the sun with no, uh, with no sunscreen and getting that beating UV rays. Um, that I have so many pictures of people aging so quickly. Uh, based solely on that, right? So that's number one. Is that sorry? Is that temperature uh, dependent or? So no, we uh, I've had patients come in with sunburns who are skiing out in like Colorado. So you can get UV damage anywhere. Um, temperature, even if it's cool, as long as the sun is hitting, the UV is there. I mean, you can you get photo damage, you can get sunscreen or skin cancer. Um, you can get lots of different things. So um, it's actually super super important, right? And so. Um, for photo, we have, you know, we treat some of the more well-known people on earth and the biggest secret is not a secret. I mean, again, they are deathly afraid of the sun and they wear sunscreen all day long. I know it sounds like a parent, but, um, but the ones who people watch on TV and in movies, they're the most kind of ride or die about this stuff of, of any of my patients. And, and I wish I could tell them to tell everybody, but it's, you know, it's one of those things where it makes such a difference that I can't even like, you know, fathom, but. You know, that's why, and then also like it can cause pigment. So in our, in our skin type, pigment is a big deal, right? Like we get dark spots, melasma, all that stuff. Again, sun is one of the biggest culprits of that. So you got to wear sunscreen, you got to pick the right kind of sunscreen. If you have melasma, then I like mineral sunscreens. Um, there's a lot of different things that go into it. And then, uh, you know, a few, there's a few different things. I, so breakouts, we see a lot of, I always call it the, uh, or is it the soul cycle rash? Because all these people come out with these little bumps on their body and stuff like that. Um, it's interesting because, you know, people think they have body acne. A lot of times it's not just straight body acne. It's not bacterial acne. Like, you know, it, um, a lot of people get what we call like a yeast acne that happens. So let's say you go to a gym, you work out with your friends and do some class, you go to brunch afterwards, you're in the same clothes, or even if you're in different clothes, you still have that sweat on you. You can get a yeast type acne. It's so common. I see it like 10 times a week where people are breaking out. And I always tell them, we're used to head and shoulders or whatever as a body wash. Um, and that actually does the trick. And I had an actor recently who was shooting on, on location, same thing. They're doing like a bunch of stunts and he's like, dude, I have this crazy breakout. Like I'm breaking out like a teenager. I'm like, uh, let's grab some head and shoulders, you know, whatever cells in blue use it for two days. And it was clear. And so, but your body, again, if you're always sweaty, working out, you know, in workout clothes, everybody buys these Lululemon expensive, whatever it is. And they love showing it off. And I just joke, I'm like, look, you have to take a shower after you get out. You have to cleanse your face because you'll break out. You can get more oily from working out. And then a lot of times, you know, volume loss is a big thing. And I know you and I talked about, cause I, I do so much media. And when I did my transformation, I lost a lot in my face. And you have to be careful with that stuff because, you know, you can use things that kind of help. Um, like for me, I use retinoids. Retinoids are vitamin A derivatives. I think you guys uh, call it something different over there. But, um, but they're good for stimulating collagen, for making your wrinkles look a little bit more subtle. Can you, sorry, can you repeat that again? What was it called? A retinol, R-E-T-I-N-O-L. Okay. And retinoids, uh, R-E-T-I-N-O-I-D-S, which here in the States, that's a prescription medication. Okay. But so when you're losing weight, your wrinkles start, tend to be more amplified, right? Because um, everything kind of is, is collapsing a little bit in a good way. But you also accentuate the, you know, the little creases and crinkles and things like that. So things like retinoids stimulate collagen, which makes your, your skin look a little bit tighter and a little bit more kind of youthful. So I was heavy on my, and I still have my retinoids every night. Um, cause that's how you maintain. I mean, one thing is it look good aesthetically neck down, but you gotta look good neck up also. So we, uh, you know, we recommend this stuff to make sure your skin is optimal, but, uh, it actually makes a difference. So it's, it's worth it. Cool. So I want to go back to the, the sunscreen one, cause that's really interesting and something I don't think I'm very good at. And I always thought it's only when you go on a holiday where the temperature is boiling hot that you actually have to wear sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. That, that's not the case. Even in, even in the cold climate of the UK, for example. No, I mean, you have to wear it. So again, there's different things the sun will do to you, right? Again, our skin type, South Asian, Asian, we like to, we love to get pigment on our face, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were at a family event yesterday, probably like 15 people asked me, what do I do with these dark spots? What do I do with these dark spots? And a lot of it's from sun. I mean, it's, it's a constant beating your, your body takes every single day. And so like I use, a, a, we have here a vino, which has soy in it. Soy is a natural lightener. 
and has it's a moisturizer that I use, but it has SPF 30 in it. So I just use it every day before I go out. Like it's my it's my morning morning moisturizer, but also has my sun protection. Um, it makes a difference. I mean, I always joke. I mean, I'm sure my parents' genetics help with my 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 youthful looks, but um, I also wear sunscreen every single day. And you know, it's not. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But when you look at your friends 20 years from now, and everybody's looking, you know, a lot more kind of worn down, and you're not. I think then people you'll be a little bit more thankful. I think people then realize, excuse me, that that they're 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 thankful for doing that little quick behavioral change. It's kind of like a little bit of cardio every day. I mean, it's good for the soul, good for the mind. Mm. Also, putting on a little bit of sunscreen, I think it's good for your aging. And and, and it's so discounted. I think it's dismissive because you know it's just it's something your parents made you do when you were little, and you just forget the, how important it actually is. Is it uh, any specific types of sunscreens that people should be looking for? Um, so there's physical and chemical sunscreens. The physical slash mineral ones are good for pigment um, in general. Um, chemical sunscreens have a little bit more kind of controversy around them right now. So um, I'm not as worried about them. But, you know, again, there's certain people that should be a little bit more careful. And so usually you can't go wrong with like those zinc based ones. Um, again, I use the Aveeno one, but um, it's or I use actually a Neutrogena full sunscreen and Aveeno moisturizer every day. But um, it depends. I mean, it depends on what you, what, what fits. I always joke, but like go buy like 10 of them and they're like five bucks each. Right. And just figure out which one you like and you have it for life. I mean, that's the, that's the honest truth. Right. So like moisturizer, sunscreens are pretty mass market cheap, which is good. Just got to figure out which one you like the most. And, and for my guys who I know love not to put things on their face and they're like, no, I mean, I'll keep it simple. Keep it simple. Just find a good moisturizer with a little SPF 30 in there, but never go below 30. Cause then it's a waste of money. Oh, interesting. I might need to take notes because I don't put anything on my face outside of beard, beard oil on my on my beard. Listen, I got you. 20, 20 years from now, you're going to be like, man, that was the most important podcast I ever did. It, it saved me. <laughs> uh, on that same topic, uh, what about the concept of, or the argument of vit- vitamin D? Does it block it? Or is that uh, is that a myth? No, so vitamin D, we all get not enough of it. There's a lot of studies that show that vitamin D is protective in cancers and things like that. There was some controversy that the guy who did the research was a little bit of a kind of a clown, but but I think the research is held up in other fields. I think for me, it's been one of those things where um, I take 5,000 units of vitamin D every day, like religion, um, for a lot of things. I think it's protective in so many different aspects of your body. Um, I also think it works really well for hair loss and, and people who lose hair. A lot of times the vitamin D is low and if, like I think the regular vitamin D rec- we recommend is like around 30 to 35. I recommend 40 or 45 for good hair. Um, just like ferritin is very big for hair. I always recommend around 70, even normal ferritin is 35. Um, so vitamin D though, every single day, I'm, I'm a big advocate of it because I personally do it. I tell my family to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's worth doing. Vitamin D, the, the whole controversy with the sun, some people are like, eh, we don't get enough, so you should go out in the sun and bake. Uh, I think if you're on the sun for like five, 10 minutes, you have enough vitamin D, <laughs> oh, wow. from the sun. but, um, but I still rather you, you supplement it and do it the right way and then bake out there and then cause all the other, you know, carcinogens from forming. So wearing sunscreen doesn't block the, the vitamin D. No, I mean, you still get some, you get, you get less of it, but, uh, but you do get it. And then like I said, you pop a couple of supplements, and you're good. I use the Amazon gummy vitamins, the vitamin D, they're very delicious. I have them every morning. <laughs> So it's uh, it's not that hard to do, but no, I think it's important. Um, and it's a really kind of, you know, like, and you have to, if you're working out so much, you're having your protein, your whatever it is, like, these are little things you can do that are, are good for you that you should be, again, the retinoid I was talking about before, it's vitamin A, right? So it's a vitamin you're putting on your face to age well. Sunscreen is the easiest thing on earth to, to find. It's everywhere. It's mm-hmm. vitamin D, the simple thing you can do every single day to help your, you know, kind of collective health. Um, I think most of the supplements out there are garbage to be super honest with you, like all these mixes and matches of whatever, but these are simple ones that even doctors use, right? So like that's, there's no other greater endorsement than like what your doctor actually probably uses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the, the topic of wrinkles and, and the wrinkles you get when you get leaner. Yeah. Is that, is that something uh, that impacts it only when you're lean or just long term? Is that for people who are aging? So scenarios are you talking about there? It's interesting because in, in, in life, you always want to lose fat, right? Everybody's always trying to fight fat. On your face, you actually want a little bit of fat and so because it keeps you looking young, right? The rounder cheeks always look the youngest for the longest, right? But you, know, you got to find that balance. And that's why like, you, know, you and I have talked a lot about finding the ideal weight for somebody like me, right? Like it might, I, 
to get super lean is more kind of building a base. And then we figure out where the kind of the end base is, you know, if I'm putting on five, 10 pounds of muscle or whatever it is, um, but you got to figure it out, but you do accentuate because I mean, when you, you can't just target singular fat loss in a singular area, right? Like it kind of all over universally goes. And so everything, when you have less fat, you have more accentuation of everything, right? So when you smile, you start seeing the wrinkles here a little bit more because you don't have that padding that, that kind of, um, kind of protects you from it. So it's just something you have to kind of keep in mind, right? So you have to have a good skin routine, going to see a dermatologist just to ease that stuff. I mean, you know, obviously we have our cosmetic options like our Botox and things like that, but um, you have to find that that balance of the aesthetics, again, neck down versus neck up. And, and you know, I think with somebody like you, a transformation, again, you're resetting the kind of the the clock a little bit, right? And then after that, then you find the happy place that becomes, because I don't think anybody wants to be like, you know, super, 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 super lean you know, forever. I think they have to find like, you know, it's kind of what you say in a consolidation and then you kind of have the reward phase and, you know, kind of at the end of all that is kind of where you end up being healthy and happy. Um, and that's also how you look too, in terms of like finding the right kind of mix and match of, you know, how much fat loss you have in your face versus your body and all that stuff. But that's what's kind of cool about being personalized with you and having the training. Cause I can kind of keep playing with it. Right. So I had like, I think since we finished our transformation, I added like six or seven pounds, but we did it the right way my face filled out nicely and it's like, it's not, you know, it's, it's not in a place where, um, I'd be worried about going on camera or anything like that. And I might put another five or six pounds of muscle now too, but it, it's, it, it, you do it the right way. So that's mm -hmm. why I think sometimes that transformation is necessary and that kind of resetting everything from the scratch and building that foundational piece and then building on top of it becomes so much easier than, you know, that whole, like, you know, trying to, trying to get to like 180 to like, 165 versus building up from like 140 something to 165. So yeah, you need that short term transformation to then get the long term lifestyle solution in the end. Exactly. Yeah, you you have to do it. Otherwise, it becomes then you you cycle right. You go up and down, up and down. It's much easier to eat a lot more food than it is to eat a lot less food for longer periods of time, right? So uh, I think it's just kind of part of it. it's just basic human kind of um, habit. Like right? you just again, most people who try to it's like if you're trying to go from like here to here, you kind of like fluctuate here. If you're down here to here and then you build back up, you can be pretty steady. Yeah, I like that. So if we had a, a neck, and I, I like how you coined it, a neck up routine. If yeah. you had a neck up routine, you'd say uh, for people that train hard, they need to wash as soon as they get out of the gym, yeah. uh, moisturize uh, with sunscreen. Yeah. And, and then if they get wrinkles, apply the retina, retina or retinoids. Retinoids, yeah. So you, you apply them any night, every night anyway. They're just good for skin health. Um, that's your night cream. Um, your cleansing is important. If you break out, I like things with salicylic acid. Um, salicylic acid is it's what we call uh, lipophilic, so it actually dissolves oil. So again, we have a lot of oil going because we're sweating and all that stuff. So it's a good cleanser. I usually have it in my, my gym bag. I think I did a, I forget if it was like, I forgot what magazine it was from. I did some like media thing where they, they actually asked me to take a picture of my gym bag and send it to them. I think it was like two years ago. And I talked about all the stuff I had in there, but I had a cleanser. I had a, a body wash. I had, uh, like I guess I, I think I had some like Dove Men's um, shampoo or whatever, but I use as a body wash too sometimes. And, and yeah, and I, my, my little, you know, SPF 30, I, it's a, uh, uh, like I said, it's, it's for me, it's just easy. You put it on, you're done, but you have to grease the, you gotta grease the joints, right? You gotta, just like you have to stretch and stuff before you're working out. After you're done working out, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta to support the, the skin structure too. And kind of, moisturize it up so that it's not, you know, creaky. And, and, and the problem is, unfortunately, when you don't protect your skin, you also have increased chance of infections and all these other things because you're going through a lot, right? So um, when you compromise that barrier, that, that epidermal, like superficial layer of your skin barrier, you can get all these infections and things because its job is to protect you. But if you're not protecting it, then it can't do anything. Well, I went through that in uh, September, right? Remember I messaged you and I had yeah. that really dry skin uh, around my cheek and my, in my head. And I kept scratching it and then it basically broke down even further and it got infected. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, I, I see that all the time. It's so common. And it's, you know, again, it's, I think skin health is, and obviously I'm biased, but it's important. Right. And you know, the more I think people are realizing it, the more people are, are seeking help and getting things done. And like, but it makes a difference just again, like sleep, like all these things, you got to protect your body because that's all you got. You only have one life, right? You only have one body. So you got to do everything you can to protect it. What, what are, um, th th sorry, things you said to me when, when I had that dry skin is you told me to put head and shoulders on it. Yeah. Uh, 
because you thought it was, you said it was a yeast related. I think you mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Um, what, are, what are the more underlying causes of dry skin? Is it a case of not moisturizing or is there something else going on? So in that case, I think we're thinking about seborrheic dermatitis. Sebderm is more from traveling and it, it, it's a base yeast you might have. Um, and so it's, just normal, it's part of our normal microbiome, as they say, right? A normal flora. And some people get more sensitive to it. I think you may have had a kind of an overlying bacterial infection on top of that that happened with scratching and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's super common. We see it all the time. I mean, especially in dry months and when it gets cold mm -hmm. and brittle outside, your skin tends to get more sensitive to everything. And so dryness can occur. I see a lot of people with eczema on their hands and their body. Um, we see psoriasis. I mean, a lot of skin conditions that are out there. Psoriasis is an interesting one. Uh, one of my favorite stories is we had a, you know, again, we're fortunate enough to have some pretty well-known people who come in. We had a singer who was performing at Madison Square Garden. And I remember she walked in to get some medication for eczema. And I walk in, I was like, you have psoriasis? She's like, no, 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 my healer in LA said I have eczema for the last you know, five, seven years. I'm like, your healer doesn't know what they're talking about. It's, it's psoriasis. And so the thing is, psoriasis is a, I call it iceberg disease. So you have these little like rashes on your body but it's much worse underneath the surface. You have inflammation kind of globally. So I was like, hey, do you, um, do you have more joint pain than you, than you would think you have? And she was like 21, 22. And she's like, yeah, I mean, I have lower back pain, but I perform in front of millions of people. Like I'm dancing all day long, like of course. And I'm like, listen, you know, at 21, I was jumping, you know, I was like Superman. I, I had no, I couldn't, I couldn't get hurt if I tried, right? And then I was like, oh, do you have any GI issues? I don't know. She's like, yeah, I have a lot of like irritable bowel syndrome and things like that. And I was like, that's your psoriasis. You can have inflammation of your, of your gut. And then I asked about cardiac. I was like, any cardiac history in the family? And she said, yeah, my father had a heart, heart attack before the age of 40. I was like, it's pretty young, you know, for a guy to have a heart attack. And then we pieced it together and she had psoriasis. And um, for her, like, she always had trouble with weight because she couldn't ever work out too much. I mean, yeah, she danced and stuff, but um, she'd get really tired and, and exhausted. And, you know, once I kind of told her what it was, or what was going on, then all of a sudden, magically, she's like, look, like, you know, I think it's like, this all makes sense now. And, I, and if I get help, will I feel better? I was like, you'll feel a thousand percent better. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into this stuff when you're training and working out, but you got to listen to your body. Um, you know, derm is part of it, but there's a lot of different things that can be causing issues. And you just have to be able to, again, we, working out's part of it and it's, it's smart and you have to do it. But you also have to just remember if, if, if you're pushing and your body's not responding, just figure out why it's not responding because it's, you know, sometimes it's, there's a little bit more there and you have to, like, just like we talk about, like putting yourself first for that stuff for health wise, you gotta get checked out too. Yeah. One thing you mentioned there was the link between uh, the gut and her skin, skin health. What is the, is there a strong link between the two and specifically the diet that plays into the gut bacteria? So there's a lot. I mean, with psoriasis specifically, there's inflammation um, in the gut. So people have irritable bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, it's a little bit increased and linked, but, you have inflammation of your gut, right? So any inflammation is going to cause irritation. You might, you know, have issues with bowel movements. You might have pain, gut pain, um, digestion problems, things like that. And so it plays a role in it. And, you know, not just psoriasis, but a lot of different things. So, you know, there's an increase, you know, a lot of people going gluten-free. Do I think, you know, everybody's allergic to gluten? No. But I do think that some people have trouble digesting certain products and byproducts. And if I were to guess in five years, I think we're all going to do genomic scans and realize that, like, you, you process a loaf of bread different than I do. You know, I can gain five pounds eating this certain exact macro split. The next person might be losing a little bit of weight just based on how we break things down. You know, and whether that's from our, you know, gut flora and how we, you know, everybody talks about the microbiome and what bacteria is there to break things down. So it might be different. And some people theorize that, you know, it's as different as DNA from person to person. But um, I do think that there's something there. So, 95% you know, of people probably can do fine. But that one small percent of people that aren't responding how you'd expect them to expect, it might just be their body's a little bit different, right? And so, you know, sometimes you got to play with things a little bit to figure that out. But if I were to guess, genomics will be a big kind of push in that range in the next few years. Um, and I, for me, it'll be kind of cool because I think it'll unlock a lot of that mystery of like why we fail at things and why we don't all respond as well as we want to respond. Yeah, is there any particular... Uh, areas of genomics you're interested in? You know, for me, it's a lot of different ones. I do a lot of hair work. So I was thinking genomics and hair. I think in hair, we have a lot of good options, but not great options. Um, one of my least favorite analogies, but probably the most accurate is when you compare like hair to like how we treat cancer. Um, it's very crude, but if you think about cancer, 
for a long time, we would just drop chemo on it, right? Chemo bombs and, and you blow up everything inside. People would get better, but they'd also get worse because it destroys everything. And then more recently in the last like 10 years or so, we started looking at genomics. We're like, oh, you can have lung cancer, but you have this type of mutation in your lung cancer. We could target that mutation and get you better. And so are there side effects? Yeah, but they're not as bad. And I think with hair, you know, right now we're just treating it based on like what we think is the main causes of it, but we don't really know. And I think some people respond really well to things like PRP or Propecia or whatever it is. Some people don't. And I think eventually we'll realize like if you're losing hair, like maybe we do the genomics of it. It'll be this mutation that's off. We can treat it this exact mutation. You know, all of a sudden magically your hair will grow. You don't waste time on the other stuff. Right now we kind of throw a lot of things at it and we see how it settles. Um, and which is fine. But I think eventually with hair, you know, it's one of my interest points. One of my research focuses that, you know, we'll, we'll see that it'll be so much more specialized and it'll make a lot more sense. So I've always been interested in oncology and genomics because I think that's been like revolutionary, but you know, I think the rest of the body too, it's going to be really interesting to see how we start using targeted therapies for everything. But on the topic of hair, is it, it's not defined as a genetic, um, you know, you hear like, oh, your dad started dropping hair when he was 25. So you're going to drop hair when you're 25. Is that, is that true? Or is there so uh, much variability to give that kind of answer? No, I think there's definitely genetics into it. I mean, I think we, We've seen a lot of like brothers both losing hair. We've seen like, you know, somebody that shows me their family, it's all bald. So they'll come in early and we'll start intervening a little bit quicker. Uh, there's definitely genomic or sorry, genetic aspect of it. Um, I think environment is big. I don't know what it is in the environment that's causing it. But a lot more people are losing a lot more hair. Um, I'm sure all this, you know, different stress and strain, I think. Uh, my joke always in my office, if somebody's losing hair fast, like what's going on in your life? I, like, you know, is breakup or, you know, whatever. But uh, I joke that it's, I think the hair is a window to the soul. Like if somebody's off, they shed hair, I mean, fast. And we've seen it after breakups, after deaths in the family, um, again, after surgeries, whatever it is, like your body tends to respond and hair, unfortunately, is the one that responds uh, usually in the worst way. And so, you know, we're learning more and more about how people kind of, you know, how their, their balance is after traumatic events. But um, I have a lot of hair people coming in after something big and our job is to stabilize it. But it's it's really interesting to see the variability in how people present after any kind of condition or life event. Because it's so linked to stress and, and what's going on inside, how do you personally treat it? It depends. We have a lot of different options. So we have supplements that we sometimes recommend. Although I think most of the supplements, to be super frank with you, are not the best. I mean, I, I like the the basic ones, your vitamin D, your iron, all that kind of stuff. I think the other ones are, are kind of nonsense right now. I mean, with good testing and good studies, maybe there's something there, but I just haven't been impressed yet. Um, we talk about minoxidil and your finasteride for men. What we do in our office, we have a topical kind of compound. That's one of my, one of my company projects that we started um, where we can personalize that we can pick and choose ingredients that are prescription drugs. We put them together and we give them to patients to help them, help them grow hair. Um, we do really well with those thousands of patients on it, but um, we also offer things like PRP. I think PRP is, it works really well for the right person. Again, that's a part of that like personal, personal thing. Like some people might not respond as well because I think on the genomic side, they might not have the right, you know, uh, issue that, that, that responds to PRP. Um, and then, you know, we, I do a lot of other stuff on the board of a couple of companies doing FDA testing for um, new devices for hair loss. And even still like we'll probably be doing hair transplants soon and stuff like that. So we, you know, there's a lot of different things that are out there, um, but hair, as like I said, it's become a big thing in our in our society, and it's it's kind of fun to see. Um, I enjoy it because those are my favorite patients because we could become like friends for life kind of joke. But we just check in. And I always check in with them. And usually, we do really good when we can get them to grow nice hair. And we just check in every six months or so. But uh, you know, we become like family, so it's a it's kind of a fun like it's a very long term relationship, thankfully. Um, because you get to know people and, you know, I, I wish I could just turn on the hair and be like, all right, well, I'll see you later. But usually we just kind of keep tabs and make sure they're doing well. And, you know, usually I always joke, if I can keep, we keep the hair for another 10, 15 years, we'll be good. So, yeah. um, but it's a, it's, it's a rewarding, rewarding part of my, my job. Well, if people are listening and they're, and they're finding out they're, they're losing more, more hair than normal, what would you advise them to do outside of get a handle of their stress? Uh, yeah, number one is yes. Look at the stress. Look at life. See if there's anything, anything triggering it. Be careful with the products you use. A lot of times you use these crazy gels, or you're heating your hair every day with like, you know, blow dryers. The trauma, the trauma to hair follicles is important. If you're having, 
um, you know, itchiness, things like that, it's best to get evaluated. Um, if you have any kind of anything in your scalp that's itchy or irritated, it's like trying to grow, you know, hair is like trying to grow like little flowers in lava. It's not going to work, right? You have to put out the fire. Um, but I do think, you know, I'm biased, but you have to see a dermatologist, you know, whether wherever you are in the world, those guys are trained on fixing this stuff. And it's really easy to fix it when it's early, really hard and more so expensive to do so later in life. And so for me, I have still patients, like the earlier you come, the better we can make this thing and the more money you'll save. Um, but you have to like, you know, you have to kind of be on top of stuff. Again, you gotta listen to your body always. And, you know, if you wait, 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 and don't prioritize yourself. And one day you're going to be like, look, I have a, you know, a 20 pack, but <laughs> I don't have any hair left. What's going on? So, um, and also like, you know, shocking the system is a thing, right? So you're going through a transformation. I actually wouldn't be shocked if somebody, you know, lose a little bit of hair because their body's kind of going through this metamorphosis and you're, it's just, it's a stress. The cortisol levels do increase in your body whenever you do anything, it's dramatic. And cortisol can cause hair loss as well. Well, I know when I'm extremely lean, like when I'm like shredded, my yeah. head, every time I go in the shower, I walk out with like, like loads of hair in my hands. Yeah. It's just no, not right. a good place for my body to be at that, that the bodybuilding contest. Yeah. But you can do some stuff. Like I sometimes prescribe topical steroids, things like that, just to calm inflammation down. That might be going on there. There's a lot of different ways you can kind of treat that. Um, but no, the body, like the body will always tell you if something is off, right? Like it's the beautiful thing of what we do. I had one of my saddest, but kind of thankful stories was I had a patient come in super sweet patient. I had been, uh, I'd been seeing her for years and she's like, yeah, you know, Dr. B I, uh, I'm losing so much hair. Like, you know, I know you do so much hair work. Can I do some injections and something like that? And I looked at her, I was like, this isn't normal hair loss. Like we need to work you up and all that stuff. She, you know, we sent her to a primary doctor. I hadn't heard from her for like a couple months. She came in she's like, I just had a double mastectomy. I had breast cancer and my hair loss was the first you know, indication of, of me, of, of what was going on. She said, we caught it very early, but she was like, thank you. Thank you for not, you know, like just trying to like inject me or do whatever. I was like, no, like, look, there's your body's always going to be telling you something. Right. So, you know, if it's slow and steady, maybe it's genetic, but also like sometimes it's not. So, that's why I'm a, obviously biased, but I think it's worth seeing a like a doctor, a dermatologist, um, because you know why not? Like at the end of the day, we we like we are a machine, right? So you got to make sure the machine, the oil, everything gets changed when it needs to get changed. You got to make sure that you're functioning at all and firing at all cylinders. Yeah. How um how often should you wash your hair? Uh, that's a good question. I think it depends on the person. So it depends how oily you get. If you're getting really oily, then I think you should do it every day. Um, I know females usually a couple times a week. We got to kind of see, I mean, a lot of times I, some people wash their once a week and they're fine. Some people, I wash it every day. Um, but I also get really oily if I don't wash it for a couple of days. So, you know, for me, for good hair health, I have to just do it, but that's a, you just don't want it to get too oily because that actually can weigh down hair follicles and you actually can lose hair that way too. So it's a, it's a fine balance. Um, I don't use conditioners as much as most people because I think they might be sometimes a little bit much for the hair if we're doing it too much, but I think you see, you know, shampooing and, and, and really just taking care of it is, is important. What about, um, uh, just going back to this, the skin topic, uh, acne on the face. Yeah. I don't know if people suffer from this. Um, what do you see as the most common reasons here and any easy tricks that people can use in their day to day, whether it's diet or topical creams, et cetera. Yeah. So I think you know, acne, a lot of times it's genetic people just have it running in families and they're just going to get it. But uh, I think oil, oil, increased oil is a big thing, right? So, um, in terms of diet, there's certain things that can be linked. It's high uh, glycemic index diets, so like high carb diets and things like that, chocolates, things like that can t technically trigger it. I think what's something that's really uncommon, that's actually common, something uncommonly talked about, excuse me, that's common is rosacea. I have a little bit of it. Rosacea is like your sensitive acne. It's trigger based. So I'll get a breakout, not from oils or anything, but I get it from like changes in stress. Um, I get it from like so rosacea triggers are like spicy foods, caffeine, alcohol, um, kind of the good things in life. And so it's one of those things where, um, you know, if I'm traveling for a few days, giving talks or things and I'm not sleeping well, like I'll sleep in a hotel, blah, blah, blah. I might get a little, little breakout or something here and there. So, um, you know, I just try to adjust, adjust when I need to. Um, there's a little bit of different treatment for rosacea versus traditional acne, but those retinoids actually do help with acne as well. So, um, you know, cleansing your face regularly, um, using a retinoid again, good for skin health, but also for breakouts as well. And if you're still breaking out, especially if you're scarring, definitely worth seeing a dermatologist. Cause sometimes we have different medications, oral medications, things like that. For our female patients, a lot of it's hormonal acne. So with their menstrual cycle, it could be triggering for different reasons. Um, but it's worth getting checked out and making sure because 
you know, acne is annoying, but scarring is kind of forever, right? So, you know, if, if, if your acne is becoming a little more serious, you got to do something, get a protocol, just like you have a gym routine, you need to have a skin routine. So, um, but it's, it makes a difference and pigment and all these things that come with breakouts, they can be very frustrating for people. So for me, you know, I always say get be proactive instead of reactive in life. Yeah. I'm noticing some common themes now in, in your practice methodologies. Yes, and it, uh, you know, it's, it's good, but it's, um, I think, you know, for us, I think there's a lot of fear on the unknown mm-hmm. and then people try all these crazy, they come in and putting all these, you know, God knows what on their face and this and that. Cause I mean, aesthetics is aesthetics, right? And whether it's your face or your body, everybody wants to look good, right? That's what it's, it's part of the mental is, it's kind of, it's feeling good, right? And you feel good. You want to look good. It's all kind of connected. It's part of your basic wellness, right? And you don't have to, you know, be a superstar movie actress or actor to just want to look good. But I think, uh, you know, with a lot of the stuff that we say, like, I feel like sometimes I'm like a, like a teacher or a parent, but, um, but these stuff are, these things are important. Right. And so if, if we can try, like I had a patient recently, we transformed her and her acne. Um, I do a lot of, you know, cosmetics and all that stuff. And I do a lot of scar cases. I don't think I've ever seen somebody so happy that when I cleared her acne after two months, I mean, she had cystic crazy, we did some lasers on it because some of the medications uh, she had interactions with. So, um, that we, we couldn't start them, but we did two lasers and she literally was like a different human being when she walked mm-hmm. in. I was like, well, like this is, you know, it's pretty good. She's smiling, laughing. First time we met her, she didn't say a word. So, um, it's, I think, you know, transformations are, can be at a lot of different levels, right? You gotta, the, but it, it, it's, 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 if there's something there that you need to fix it, you fix it. It's okay. Yeah. And, and speaking of, uh, putting loads of shit on your face, as you mentioned, what are your thoughts on the, on the, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the popularity of a lot of the beauty modifications like, uh, Botox and, and fillers and how have you seen the rise of these over the last few years with social media and, and how everything's transpiring? So it's a mixed bag, right? So we do a lot of it. Um, but it's a very sticky subject with me personally, because I do think about that stuff a lot and we have young 20 year olds coming. And I never do it with them. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's, you know, I think society as a whole is a little bit too fixated on the, uh, there was an article and they called the Instagram face, right? It's this fascinating philosophy that let's just say like every day I show you pictures of somebody with like 20% bigger lips, right? Um, every day I show it to you, I show it to you, I show it to you. Then I show you somebody with 10% bigger lips. That's going to look small to you because your brain is going to start creating this idea that that 20%, even though it's kind of like large and not appropriate, that that's a baseline. And so when you go a little bit smaller than that, it's going to look weird to you, even though it's still 10% bigger than whatever the normal lip is. Right. So I think with social media, we've been trained now with kind of like almost like caricature type increases in, in certain proportions that you need to enhance something. You know, for me, it's, it's a, I like to, everything's ethical for me. Like I, you know, I always joke, but I'm our parents kid. So I can't be like this, you know, we might inject some of these well-known people and do all this cosmetics and stuff like that. But there's ethical boundaries that I'll never break. And for me, it becomes really simple. Like if I can help you feel better as you, I'm happy to do so. If you bring me a picture of somebody else that I'm not your doctor, I don't want to make somebody look different. Right. I think it's kind of cool to be able to like, you know, with, I've had a patient before bring in, like she's, you know, she's getting married and she's like, look, like this is what I looked like five years ago. Can you get me to look like that? Yeah, that's good. I could do that. You could do it five minutes. I think it's super cool, right? When you, somebody you can kind of like, if their cheeks are dropping, just bring them up a little bit, like a couple millimeters here and there, and you can restore youth. I think that's the coolest thing on earth. Um, but that's them being them, right? So that's like a way different than them being somebody else. So if they bring me a picture of Kylie Jenner or somebody, I'm like, look, like you are you for a reason. That's what makes you unique and special. Like, let's not try to make you somebody or not. And it's, I think with that, you know, for me, it's been my kind of, my safety place. And, and, and morally, I think that's been great. Um, but there's a fine line. You have to trust people and, and you have to get to know them. Like nobody, I just do just to do. Um, if somebody just gets over a breakup and they want to do something, thing, we, we talk them out of it real fast, you know, like there's, you know, cause that little modification is not going to change how you feel. And that's, you know, we can't, you can't compensate that way. And so I think if you put on a good ethical hat and you have conversations with your patient, I love my patients to death. We really do become family. It's super cliche, but like, you know, I, I keep a intimate practice. I don't have a factory. I don't see 50 people a day. You know, I see a small, like 20 to 30 people max, maybe even 20 is my, my special number, right. Where I can talk to people, see how they're doing. I can tell if something is off. Like, you know, we, we become very, very, um, kind of, uh, granular in terms of how we have our relationship so that when we do something or when we, we look at, you know, any procedure we need to do, we do it the right way. 
Beautiful. What is your uh, what is your why as a dermatologist? Like, what is the reason you do this? Um, it's hard to it's hard to really articulate, but it's kind of like that person I told you. You see somebody trans. Probably the same reason why you have a why, right? You see somebody transform, and there's it's like a drug. Like, there's nothing greater than seeing somebody become happier. And for me, like cutting out a skin cancer, you get to really support system somebody in a, in a time where they're terrified. You're like, look, you have a skin cancer. Let's cut it out. We're done. Like, let's move forward. Right? Amazing. I do a lot of scar work also. So some of my scar patients are some of the hardest cases. We have people flying in from around the world. You know, when you could remove that like painful memory from somebody and they could become themselves again, and you see them like that's that's a why, right? For even for cosmetics, I think when you can make somebody more confident, to why, right? So there's a lot of different things, but for me, my I think my greatest privilege is playing a part in somebody's kind of self improvement. And I think you know, it's it's if you're doing things for money, you'll never be happy. I genuinely believe that. What are the best? I'm sorry, go ahead, Karen. I'm saying, but if you're doing it for purpose, I think that's when you realize that like. It doesn't matter how much money you make. Money will always come, right? But you you go to sleep happy, you wake up happy. That's the thing. I was going to say, to em- emphasize that, one of the best stories I've heard from you is the, the one that got featured in Daily Mail. I think there was a, a lady in the UK whose story you read about and you flew her out uh, after after reading that. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, the slasher case. Yeah, the slasher case. Yeah, I mean, that, that, you that was in Daily Mail, but... um. It was actually here in New York. Um, so she was slashed across the face. And it was really interesting because I had been reading about it because it was close to our office. Um, and she was super young. She was, I think she worked at Whole Foods or something like that. It was close by. I was just watching it. I was like, it's so crazy. It's so young. Like it's, you know, and just walking, nothing, not doing anything, just going about her way. And it was funny because I was, you know, reading up, reading up. And I stumbled across a GoFundMe page for her. You know, still like to get a to get funding so she can get some cosmetic treatments and things like that for, um, to kind of make herself look back to what she did. I mean, she had big gash marks, unfortunately on her face. And I was like, man, like she's raising money. I should donate. And then I was like, wait, she donated to something I can do. Like, why don't I just do it? And so, so I reached out to her. I was like, look, let's, uh, I'm happy to comp it. Let's just do this thing the right way. And we didn't do it for media or press. The media and press kind of just kind of caught wind of it. But I think within three months, I mean, I was super aggressive. I'm probably one of the more aggressive laser people on earth, but, we got her back to normal to the point where the, I think the camera company in one of the news shows zoomed in on her and couldn't find the scars, which is really funny. And, um, but that's purpose, right? Like I got to see a girl when she was most vulnerable, put her kind of back together, if you will, and see her kind of flourish in life. And, you know, in that one, you know, again, we didn't do it for media reasons, but the media was fortunate enough to, to cover it. And the interesting why on that one was that, it wasn't just her. Like I, I got probably a hundred plus messages from people around the world being like, Hey, I read that article. I went to go get help and now I'm getting better. And I just, I wouldn't go outside otherwise. And, you know, sometimes you never realize impact that kind of can occur from some of this stuff. And, you know, for me, I would say like, I can only do so much, but if you can kind of spark that next person for doing something that's great for them, then you've done enough. Amazing. The domino effect. Always. Yeah. yeah. Just to finish up on, what are you most excited about coming into 2020? Um, it's going to be really interesting. I, uh, you know, there's the fun projects coming in. Um, it's going to be interesting, a lot more front facing media and all that craziness. But, um, honestly, I think freedom, like it's the ability to kind of like, I think, you know, you go through training and, and med- medicine's a long journey and you go through training, you go through this, you build phase, build phase, build phase. But now, as you guys say, the reward phase and to now kind of to try to act on some of the ideas that we've been building for years and, and really seeing them flourish and grow. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really cool to be able to, to see that. And now, you know, at a place in life where, you know, it's, it's, if you can dream it, you can do it kind of thing. We have access points to whatever we need to do. And so, you know, you get to kind of like, now you stop daydreaming and you get to actually like see these things happen in real, real time and live. And, you know, it's been really fun. And I I think on the fitness side, it's going to be kind of fun to kind of, um, kind of push my limits a little bit a different way. So, you know, now with me, like I love like challenges, right? So I love to like set this thing and do it. And I think for, for part of like how, you know, when, when I dropped down all the way and did all that stuff, it's gonna be kind of fun to increase the weight and see how to, how I, um, how I can push the limits and PRs and stuff like that, that way too. So it's going to be a lot of cool, like I think breaking barriers part of the thing, like a lot of it was investment and all that stuff earlier, but now we get to kind of like break down the, uh, the doors if you will and see what happens. Amazing. 
If you had one, uh, if you had, do you have any parting words for anyone who's starting their transformation journey right now? I mean, you gotta, I think you have to just commit, right? Like for me, my journey was actually two years. Um, by loss, I got like 20 pounds in the first like year and a half. And I think with you, I lost like 30 pounds in like three months or four months or whatever it was. Um, we were actually, I think done before my actual shoot for like a while. I think we were trying to align my shoot. Um, with the opening of my that book did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was tough. Cause I, I was trying to align it with the opening of my office cause I needed some structure cause my, my office was being built in New York city. New York city is crazy expensive, crazy stressful, crazy everything. So that was my balance for it. But I think when you, you kind of lock in, I think for you, you held me accountable. I think unfortunately, as much as we would hope to hope be held accountable, sometimes we just, it, things slip, right? And you, you just need somebody kind of chirping and you, you do a good job of bothering me until I, until I get back to you, which is good. I need that. Um, but you know, I think when you're starting that journey, you know, it, it, it just, you gotta roll with it. You can't look at like, you can't over stress everything. Like, you know, it's week by week, day by day, brick by brick, and you'll get there. You just have to kind of trust the process. And I think for me, like, you know, I, you know, I, I committed all in. Um, it worked out really, really well. I didn't think my body type could support that kind of fitness, but it did. Um, and it was really funny because the, uh, I don't know if I told you that men's health article was like trending on, uh, yeah. it's trending like on Apple news. So I, I forgot how many millions of people saw it, but uh, I had a lot of messages the day that thing went out. And a lot of it was really interesting because it was so many of my friends saying, dude, like I need to do something now too. Like I didn't know you could do that. I don't know. Maybe I could do that too. And it was super cool. But, um, you know, I think when you, when you start this thing, it's, you kind of have to do it. This is that, you know, everybody needs that moment, that Eureka moment where they're like, all right, like, this is it. Like now or never kind of deal. And I think when we, when we kind of um, aligned, that was for me, like, all right, like let's take fitness seriously. And, you know, my life is very front facing. We're in media press all day long. And, you know, if I don't take care of certain things, not even just for the aesthetic, but for the mental um, I will never be able to function how I want to function. So for me, it's become a lifestyle and it's, it's nice. You know, it's, I don't think you need to spend tons of money to do, you know, like, like here in this city, it's like double the cost to do a personal training session for somebody to yell at you for like 40 minutes. I was like, that's, that's that part you can take care of yourself. Right. But having somebody you can check in with, talk to discuss different fitness plans, diets, like, you know, that is invaluable. And I think when, when you start that stuff, it seems overwhelming but it, it just, you, like everything in life, it's, it's, everything's tough in the, in the beginning. And within, you know, a few short days, you kind of get used to it and it becomes lifestyle. And once it becomes lifestyle, it's part of your routine. And once it becomes part of your routine, then, you know, that's, that's, that's part of you. So, you know, I think people will be pleasantly surprised no matter how hard it is. You kind of, it breeze through it. You don't even realize what's happening. And, you know, week by week, again, brick by brick, you start building the new version of yourself. Amazing. I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Where can people find you? Um, so my, my offices are here in New York. I'm in Miami too, seeing patients, but, um, on Instagram, we do that Dr. Bonasali. Um, I think on Twitter and Facebook as well, but I'm always around. So I'm always happy to help. And in, in your, uh, in your groups, if anybody has skin questions, have them tag me and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to help. But I, I, although I can't give specific diagnoses and, and treat people on there, but you know, general recommendations, I was happy to help, but, no, my friend, I appreciate you and I appreciate what you're building. I think this is, you know, you're building an army of people who are, who are arming themselves to help themselves, which is really cool. And I think as you, as you see people flourish afterwards, there's no, it won't be a coincidence that they did these transformations and did great things with their lives. Like, I think this is, you know, a part of how a person becomes a person and how they, um, I think this is going to be really, as you grow this thing out, it's going to be really fun to see like, not just the before stories, if you will, and the transformations, but the after stories in life, because that's like the next transformation that occurs, right? So that's going to be the, the 2.0 of your, uh, of, your, of your journey, but that's going to be a really, really, really fun um, next 5, 10, 15, 20 years or so. Amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks for coming on today. Absolutely. My pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for being here today on this episode of RNT Fitness Radio. I'd love for you to do a quick little favor for us. Please head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating, leave a comment, and share it with your family and friends. If you're interested in learning more about how to transform your body and positively change your life, go to www.rntfitness.com and explore all our free content on offer. Thank you.